Now, as we've been reporting earlier, the uh, father of a Telford grooming victim has asked the English Defence League and Britain First not to use images of his daughter to promote Islamophobia. Vernon Rand's daughter Vicky died when she was 20 after becoming addicted to drugs and alcohol. I want to discuss this all with uh, Ajmal Mazroor, an imam who leads Friday prayers at four different mosques in London. And, and very good to see you here. It's a thorny issue, isn't it? Because there is this fact that of the grooming gangs where there have been convictions, the, the majority of men convicted have come from some kind of Muslim background. Very sadly. And that's something that we all need to grapple with and speak about and try and understand why and how we can rid it from our society at large. Remember, paedophiles, large number of them, are white English. We don't blame the entire English race. We don't blame Christians for it. I would say let's not blame Islam or the Muslims of this country or the globe for the vile, heinous acts of these absolute nutcases, criminals, and they should be locked up for a long time. But you know the, uh, the analysis, and you may have seen uh, Jason Farrell's reports from, from Sunderland involving members of the English uh, Defence League and others, and indeed the leader of UKIP, uh, and the analysis coming from those quarters is, is that when it comes to these grooming gangs, uh, they regard Islam as a superior religion, and those who aren't members as a lesser form of human being, and therefore they have the right to carry out such abuse. If you look at these grooming gangs' profile and their background, most of them were taxi drivers with very little education. Basic literacy and numeracy probably was absent. They did not know even the eye of Islam, never mind Islam the religion. So therefore, to say that they were inspired by the religion itself would in fact be an insult to the intelligence of majority of the people of our country. So I'd say... So it's not religious. I mean, do you think it's more of a cultural background? I think these are ignorant buffoons. They took advantage of vulnerable girls. They thought they could get away with it. And, of course, not inspired by any ideology as far as I'm concerned, just by their predatory nature. We can't say pedophiles are inspired by an ideology. It's criminal. We can't give them justification or credence by giving a sacred religion an association with such people. That would be a great mistake. And I actually commend the father of Telford girl who was uh, mm. such a victim for saying that. All of us should stand up and say to English Defence League and UKIP leaders that actually, guys, you're no different than these ignorant buffoons because you don't know much about Islam. You are also maligning religion of Islam with the terrible heinous practices of some criminals. But do you think it's a, it's a growing belief and it seems to be among certain quarters, certainly the, the, some of the people that Jason Farrell was talking to, and let's broaden it out, that, that Islam, the religion has at its core, as, as is mentioned by Gerard Batten, uh, he, he describes it as a death cult. I think that is complete and utter misrepresentation of Islam. I'm a Muslim, an imam, have been Muslim all my life, have read my religion thoroughly. I would not be a Muslim sitting here talking about it if I didn't know it intellectually. I challenge anybody that, look, show me how it is, what you are saying it is. In fact, most of the time when they even open their mouth to criticise Islam, it sounds childish. It sounds factually incorrect. It sounds implausible because what they're saying doesn't make any sense because I have not read the Quran that they're referring to. Okay. I have not found these teachings in Islam at all. And yet they think they constantly can regurgitate it and make people believe it. Well, you know, I haven't read any religious books because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a non-believer in all of them. But it's a good so, starting so, so point so that if you did read. I haven't been through the Quran, but, I mean, is it true then? There's no mention of killing infidels and, uh, and kafirs. There's, there's nothing like that in the Quran. The English word infidels actually comes from... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Europeans, when they went to crusades, holy war came from the Christian literature. Mm -hmm. I think it's wrong to put those words in Islam. There are mentions of war in the Quran, of course, but those wars are ultimate war for peace and stability in the world, against aggression, against occupation, to free humanity, to establish justice for all people. These are greater causes. Let's not tarnish them and reduce them to people's narrow-mindedness and bigoted attitude towards Islam and the Muslims. You know what? They don't understand Islam. And I tell them, if they understood Islam, if they read one inch of Islam from an authentic book, I think they would become Muslim themselves. OK, well, you know what Jared Batten comes back and says, well, OK, okay. If, if you say that, well, could, could all Muslims in the United Kingdom sign a document saying that they reject any of the violent bits of the Quran? The, you know, there, that, that, that's a kind of growing feeling. That's, but there is Gerard no Batten has said that. There is no violent bits in the Quran that invites anyone to kill. It says opposite. It says if you take one life, it is as though you've taken the lives of the entire humanity. It's if you save one life, it is as though you've saved the lives of the entire humanity. Now, in the Quran, would you believe the Arabic word for violence is unf? The Arabic word unf does not appear even once in the Quran. 
Mm -hmm. And yet the Arabic word for peace appears more than 100 times. So there is an, of course, misrepresentation, a wrong and a false narrative perpetrated by and whipped up by the right wing. And I want to challenge them. Come well, to my have, mosque, you, you, read Islam okay. with me, and well, you will change. Well, I hope that happens. So, Mr. Masroor, very good to see you. Thank you very much indeed.